Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming out. Uh, like you said, I'm going to be talking about code review in open source. Uh, my one request for you is please ask me questions as we go. If you try to talk over me or raise your hand, I'll stop and uh, ask to hear your question or comment or whatever you want to add. So a tiny bit of background about me. I work at Rackspace right now doing mostly open source stuff. And I have stickers if you're interested after the talk. And most of what I have to say here is not actually about experiences I have from jobs, from experiences I have in lots of different Python open source communities. In particular, Django, PyPy, OpenStack, and uh, Cryptography.io. All of those have really influenced my thinking. And I also uh, volunteer a lot with the Python Software Foundation. So I'm a big believer in giving definitions of things before you start talking to them. So what is code review? Code review is this screen, more or less. The leaving comments on other people's codes, uh, reading people's code, and giving feedback. It's distinct from an architecture review, or maybe a security review, or something else. A code review is all about some sort of review where the subject under review is a piece of code, almost always a diff. Uh, I suppose you could do code review of an entire artifact after it's been built. I think it's way more effective to do it incrementally on a diff by diff basis, and I'll get into that as we go along. So why code review? Uh, I'm going to advocate really strongly that I think your company and your project should have code review as a huge and integral part of your process. Why? What are the benefits? First and foremost, it raises the bus factor, which is something we're always concerned about in open source, right? How many people would have to get hit by a bus or get distracted for the project to be in jeopardy or maybe part of the project? Maybe there's one module that's really confusing. How do, how do we avoid that? And code review forces another person to be so familiar with your code that they're willing to pass judgment on it. And for me, that, that's a pretty high bar. I don't want to just casually gl glance at something and say, oh, this is no good or this looks fine to me. To be willing to pass judgment on a piece of code, I have to have a pretty decent level of familiarity on it. And people who understand code and people who get that depth of understanding with uh, your code, they'll be more willing to help you maintain it in the future. And if you want to step away from the project, they'll hopefully be there to help take over going forward. Code review helps ensure readability. When we sit down to write code, just implicitly as a part of the process of writing code, we're optimizing for what makes our process of writing code easier. The things that make code easier to write are not always the things that make code easy to read. And by forcing someone to read the code, they're going to try to balance that out. OK, you wrote the code to optimize for writability. Now I'm going to look at it and be like, well, you optimized to have to type as few characters as possible. And as a result, all your variable names are incomprehensible. You keep using T and X, and those don't actually mean anything in this context. Can you use uh, more descriptive variable names? Because my process of reading the code is very different from your process of writing the code. To possibly the smallest extent, I think this is actually one of the least valuable things about code review, is you have the process to catch bugs. Uh, there's the maxim, given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow, which to varying degrees is true. Many hands make light work. It's possible that someone will catch bugs in your software by doing code review. But sort of like testing, I think uh, the actual process of catching bugs, while it's there, is way less important than the things it forces you to do about designing your software and the culture that you have around designing culture, that you have around designing your software. Because the most important thing about code review is it can be a part of encouraging a really healthy engineering culture. People need feedback to get better at their jobs, to get better at contributing to your open source project. And code review gives you a structure to give feedback about what's nominally part of the biggest thing you do, write code. When feedback is irregular rather than a core part of what you do, feedback is often used for criticism instead of for learning and growth. When feedback is something everyone does to everyone else, it's very equalizing. Whereas if feedback is an irregular thing that happens only maybe senior people review junior people's code, it's, it's just structurally designed for criticism rather than for helping everybody improve. But all of this requires two conditions. First, that people are acting in good faith, and people are committed to not being jerks, and people understand they're reviewing, that they're reviewing code and not people. This applies to both people who are reviewing code and people whose code is being reviewed, and most people will have both roles within the lifetime of a project. There are a lot of people out there who seem to believe that code review requires you to be a jerk, and that's just factually wrong, and it's an excuse to be mean, and like, just don't do that. It's, it's a real bad scene. Uh, so those are sort of why I think code review is critical for a project. 
here are my rules to make code review effective for your project. First, don't make people spend a lot of time doing what computers can do. People are good at people things, having soft, squishy opinions about code. Machines are really good at machine things. Code review is not the process of downloading a patch and running the test suite manually on your laptop or uh, carefully going over the code with a fine tooth comb to make sure all the white space is correct and that there are no style guide violations. Get a continuous integration server to do that. Don't make a person do that. First of all, it will make the process really just a pain in the neck. The process of code review will not be about the thinking and the critical work that goes into looking over code and applying your thinking process to it. It will be about the pain of extracting a diff file from track, applying it to your local repo, running the tests. There's, all of that work can be automated. And when you put it into the process a person has to do, it makes them look forward less to doing that task. When we look at the field of motivational psychology, a lot of the research we know pretty much divide tasks down the line between things that are manual, automatable, and don't require critical thinking or creativity, and the things that do require critical thinking and creativity. Code review should be all about creativity and critical thinking, not about manual process. Everybody gets code reviewed. I, I think this is possibly the single most critical thing I can share with you. Code review is not something the senior people do to the junior people. It's something everybody does as a part of their job or as a part of their contributing. The person on their first day gets to review the person who is the first engineer at their company or the original core developer of the product. No one is above review and no change is above review. And I think it's really critical to do code review before patches get merged. Uh, I've seen projects and teams where code review is done on a post-commit basis. And I think this has some slightly unfortunate effects. One, it promotes the feeling of like inevitability. You don't want to nitpick too much. The patch has already landed. Like, who wants to be a pain? It, like, we can just get on with our lives. Second, you miss stuff. When it's not part of the process to get a patch landed, there's nothing forcing you to review it after the fact. So it's, it becomes just sort of this optional, like, oh, if we get to it, maybe on some really important changes. And that cuts against every single change every single time. Uh, no patch is too small or too simple. Pretty much patches I say, oh, this is too small. There's no way I've screwed anything up. 100% of the time break stuff. Just without fail. It just, yeah. I, at this point, I know if I even find myself thinking that way, like, oh, yeah, I should tell people to review this extra well. Like, it's going to break stuff. Uh, this is also really important because it forces you to have a system where code review is easy. Uh, you don't want code review to be a pain, otherwise it get, you know, it'll get this bad rap, oh, code review is slowing us down so much, when in reality it's we have a bad process. Uh, and it also means you never have to have an argument about what is too small. Uh, that's kind of the nice thing about hard and fast rules, it saves you the time on arguments. But is 40 lines too small? Is 10 lines too small? Is changing the format of comments too small, even though it's thousands of lines? Just skip the argument and have a good process that you can always implement. So those are, I think, uh, the key philosophies behind this. Now sort of the practicalities. How do you dive into this? What are the processes? First, the most important thing to do is get a tool to help you out with this. Fabricator, GitHub, and Herit are the tools I've used uh, professionally in an open source. There's tons of other tools out there. Get whichever one makes your team happy. Uh, but get yourself a tool. The important things the tool should do is keep track of the history of patches, let you leave inline comments on specific lines of code. Doesn't matter what, as long as the tool really facilitates easy feedback and ease of acting on the feedback. So if you're a patch author, and again, this is a role that you'll play. Sometimes you'll play the patch reviewer. Sometimes you'll be the patch author. When you are the patch author, first thing to do when you say, I've got a patch that needs review, describe what the patch does. It's amazing how often someone, particularly in open source, will come. Here's a patch, and it does this. Why does it do this? What's the meaning? What, pro what bug are you trying to fix? Are you, you're trying to add support for this platform, and that's why you're moving this code around? What is the, what is the patch supposed to do? It's, it's really hard to review a patch for correctness when you don't know what the correct behavior is. Uh, I didn't know you were trying to fix that bug. I thought you were just moving code around for your own health. <laughs> uh, another critical thing, keep patches small. Studies have shown that beyond even two to 400 lines of code, patch review gets uh, less effective. People are less likely to find bugs. People are less likely to f leave comments. 
Uh, someone once described this as five line patch, 20 comments, 50 line patch, no comments. Uh, it's much preferable to review a long series of small patches than a small series of huge patches. It's, it's gotten to the point, uh, once a number of years ago as a Google Summer of Code student, I pretty much spent the entire summer putting together a single patch that ended up being, I think, 20,000 lines of code. It actually crashed our track server when you tried to view it at the end. Now, when I load up like a pull request and it's got more than like 600 lines of code, I start like getting scared. Oh my God, there's so much scrolling. The patch is so big. It's, it's really amazing just how much easier small patches are to review. And code review is collaborative. When your reviewer gives you feedback as a patch author, it's your job to work with them to try to get the best patch possible. If you disagree with the feedback, if you think they're making suggestions that don't actually improve it, have a conversation. Uh, a review comment is hopefully either just an obvious thing that you can respond to or it's the starting point of a conversation. It's not, oh, I need to take orders from the reviewer because they're the reviewer and I'm the author. This is a collaborative process. On the flip side, when you're reviewing a patch, there are a couple things that you need to be doing. First, what are you looking for? You've got a, you've got a diff in front of you. What, what's going on? What's your responsibilities here? The first thing to look for is intent. What is the patch trying to do? Hopefully the patch author has told you. If not, it's almost not worth it to look at the substance of the patch before you ask. What's going on? And then reviewing that. OK, they say they're trying to make this change. Is that really a bug? Maybe they've just misunderstood the behavior. Do we actually want this new feature? Maybe this feature is out of scope for our project. Thinking about these issues. Next, getting into the design of the change. OK, I know what change they're trying to make. How are they trying to go about it? Did they change the CSS when maybe it was actually a problem with the HTML? Did they add JavaScript instead of fixing the bug in the CSS? Is the change going in the right place, in other words? Next, diving down into the real meat of this, the implementation. Does the patch do what it says on the tin? Is it complete? Does it cover all the cases? Does it introduce new bugs, maybe? Does it have documentation and tests? This is sort of the core of code review, looking over what the patch does and how it does it. And finally, the minutia, the grammar of the change. Do the variables have good names? Should something be passed as a keyword argument instead of a positional argument? All sort of the nitty details that you see on a line by line basis. A thing that's really important is you want to work from intent to grammar down. Don't start judging the variable names until you've understood the architecture of the patch and what it's trying to accomplish. If you start looking at variable names and start giving feedback about them, it's so easy to lose track of what you're doing I noticed the variable name was wrong, but I missed the fact that the patch was in the entirely the wrong place and doesn't actually fix the bug. So it's, it's super critical and it's so easy. It, grammar is the easiest thing to give feedback on, right? So it's, it's just our instinct to just start giving feedback as soon as we see something, but it's so critical to force yourself to work from intent down. And then there are going to be a couple different types of feedback items you'll leave on tickets. Uh, the first is to-dos. These are mostly things that must be done. You know, I see that this doesn't handle this case. Uh, there's a regression here where when someone passes a string with more than four characters, we've changed the behavior. Next type of thing are questions. These are points of clarification. Uh, would it be faster if we rewrote it this way? I'm not sure. Can we reuse some function in the standard library for this? None of these are necessary items. It's just a question for possible follow-up. And a lot of these I've discovered, it turns out that if the reviewer is having trouble, has a question about how the code works, these make perfect things to become comments in your code. Uh, if I don't understand why you're passing a zero as the argument here, leave a comment. Oh, actually this argument is ignored. Uh, zero is just a random number and it's still there for backwards compatibility. That becomes a great comment. Don't just leave that in the pull request history. And finally, uh, suggestions for follow-ups. These are things the patch author might want to do if it fits in the flow of what they're working on. Maybe it just becomes a ticket filed for later. Uh, oh, you refactored this function. I think now there are a couple places in this other module we can just use this logic. Let's file a ticket to consolidate that logic later. Uh, just keeping track, housekeeping basically. I, I've actually started lately. Don't even put these on the patch author. If you think there's a to-do for later, file the bug yourself uh, because it's just not in scope for their patch. If it's in scope for their patch, it's a question. If it's not, do, do the work yourself of filing the bug. 
Next, there are a couple anti patterns that have, fortunately I've seen a lot, both in open source projects and in uh, commercial projects. Uh, processes where it's, there's a lot of manual work. I, I'm going to keep hitting on manual work because unfortunately this is something I see in one of my favorite projects. And they put so much effort into doing really studious, critical code review. And they've been doing this like since way before it was popular. And they've been doing it to such good effect. Unfortunately, their process is very manual. People download patches from the tracker. People uh, apply the patch manually, push them to a branch manually, trigger the continuous integration system manually, review for style guide violations manually. And it's, I, I can just see within this community how deflating it is. People are not excited about working on code review. Code review means five minutes of thinking hard about a patch and whether it works correctly, and 15 minutes fighting with the build bot or fighting with the static, uh, the static analysis checker. And it, it's so unfortunate because this community does such a good job at the people stuff. And particularly as an open source project, it's running on people's free time. If they're not excited about working on it, it's not going to become to the top of my free time list. I'd much rather learn to cook something new than fight with BuildBot for like 20 minutes. That's, that's not my idea of a good Saturday. Uh, which is unfortunate because reviewing, you know, reviewing an interesting patch and really thinking about the design issues, that's a good Saturday. Uh, so that this, ma <laughs> this manual process is it's dragging their community down. It's, I, I just can't uh, understate how unfortunate it is if they had a, a more automated process where someone was able to push a change and it automatically went into the, uh, you know, the CI automatically triggered. They automatically got feedback about style guide violations. Uh, one particularly painful part of this community's review process is when you want to have feedback. Okay, I left a review. How do I get the new patch for you? Re-importing that set of changes into the version control system is like a next level pain, right? Because I've got my local copy and you've got the remote copy. And they're on SVN, so they're not well synchronized. It's, it makes the actual process of review harder. Uh, if leaving feedback is now like, oh, I don't want to leave feedback, because like, maybe I can just make this change for them, because I don't want to ask them to do the round trip. Or I don't want to ask them to split this into two patches. Managing two patches in this process is way more painful than managing one process. We'll deal with the fact that it's you know, an 800 line patch, and it's harder for us to review. Uh, the other problem with their process cuts into irregular. This project has a super regular process, uh, but the process is different for core developers and for people who are new to the project. Code review, when it's regular, when it's everybody does it, as it is for them, and when it's automatic, it can be such an equalizer. Uh, and when we, I've seen this with other projects. You don't notice who are the core developers and who aren't, because everybody's patches go under review. Uh, one of the projects I work with, OpenStack, they don't even use the term core developer anymore. They use the term core reviewer. That's the distinction between uh, your ability. It's your ability to finalize a review. Everybody can do a review, but only some people can actually mark the review as finalized and the patch ready for landing. And that's just working within this community, I can feel the difference. I don't notice who are the people who have been around the longest, because I see everybody's patches. And uh, even as a new person, I can leave feedback. When the code review is irregular, not everybody does it. A lot of what it means is new people deal with it, and the old people, like, we've been around the block. We'll just try not to break stuff when we, we commit directly to master. And we break stuff. We break so much stuff. Uh, this is, in addition to like just the obvious social dynamics of two different groups of people, it also means the people who have been around your community the longest, the people with the most authority in your community, they're not going through what the new people are going through. So it's really hard to advocate on their behalf. When everybody has the same process, it's much easier. When I have the same process, the person who just started today, yeah, I'm advocating for that process. I have to go through that process. We're all in this boat together. It's easy to care about the same stuff. When I have one process and the new person has a different process, it's hard. And when that person's process is crappy and they decide not to come back, we don't often get a lot of great feedback from people who've only given one patch. For like bad historical reasons, their feedback isn't taken as seriously as the people who've been around for forever. And mostly, like a lot of them are not comfortable giving feedback on, you know, giant open source project, dozens of contributors. I had a bad experience contributing. That's got to be on me, right? So many other people have been through this process, but they don't remember what it was like in the beginning, and they lost track of all the ways it was terrible. So I think code review 
it's by far most critical thing is being an important part of your engineering culture. Being a way to get feedback for people to have growth, to let people know how they can improve at what they're doing, and to just try to grow structure around giving feedback and giving positive feedback for growth. And as a side effect, it also makes it much easier to ship good code. When you make a point of looking over changes, giving feedback, that's going to improve the quality of your code and particularly the quality of the readability. It's, I feel one of the most grateful things I've taken from the Python community is the maxim that code is read more often than it's written. By and large, it's written once and read possibly hundreds or even thousands of times for a big open source project. You need somebody sitting over your shoulder saying, hey, this, this function is hard to read. Like, I can tell you wrote it and it, I think it's even correct, but it took me a lot more effort to know that it was correct. What if we spent time optimizing for the next 100 people who are going to have to read it? Thank you very much and questions. Go for it. An anti pattern you did. You mentioned that I find myself running into a lot is the rubber stamp, where I put a patch up for review and you get a plus one faster than it would take for someone to even read it. Um, and, and, you know, I appreciate the code review. review gives me confidence that my change is right. When, you know, people read it and comment on it, have faith in it. But when I get an immediate plus one, it really makes me nervous. How do you kind of combat that as the person? Uh, so one of the ways we combat that uh, is uh, just, it's hard, but just like always remembering like what happens when we do the code review badly. This is one of the projects I've been working on lately is a cryptography project and like just working on that project is stressful in all the right ways, right? That we feel like there's such an importance to getting what we do right. So when you're working on, you know, a web framework or something where not, not that it's less important or anything, but there's less obvious immediacy to like how important to me. Uh, one of the ways is always making sure like you wait to see that the build bot is green before leaving feedback. Uh, the build bot takes at least 10 seconds or something. Fast tests are like you want fast tests for a variety of reasons, but you want them to be slow enough that like somebody has to actually have taken time to read. Uh, not that I'm advocating for slow tests in any way. Don't tell the TDD people I said that. Um, yeah, I, I think. I'm not sure. I've, I've not experienced that a whole lot. I'm not sure how to deal with that anti-pattern. You said you had a second question? Um, the other one is, um, do you think it's OK to leave a comment on a code review that, like, you know, let's say if it goes back to what Kino was talking about, like, you're not sure if you know if it works or not, but you don't know if it's, you don't understand or if it's totally wrong. Totally. That's, that's yes, 100%. That's, that's great fodder for sort of the question feedback. I'm not sure I understand this function. Can you try commenting it so I can work through it better? And like, I think there might be a bug, but maybe comments would help me understand. A million percent, yes. Yeah. So definitely, the hardest thing is adding code review on after the fact. Uh, I've had so much better success uh, starting projects with it. But moving projects towards it, first, getting better tools. Uh, this is one of the things I saw with Django. Two or three years ago, we moved from our own track instance, an SVN, to GitHub. And it was people respond to having the better tools. I see core developers, even though we don't have a mandatory code review process yet, I see core developers asking for reviews more frequently because it's easy. Uh, so getting great tools, I think, is one part of it. Uh, the other part is asking for reviews yourself. Uh, just setting that example that, yeah, I, I want feedback on what I do. Yeah, I've been working on this project for five years, but of course I still need feedback. Everybody needs feedback. Uh, and it, it can get into a really self-reinforcing uh, cycle. Uh, and then write, sort of writing up what your pr process for code review is even before it's mandatory. OK, when we do code review, this is how we do it. Getting sort of all the process around it, making people want to go into code review, because they know it makes their code better in the end. It gives them more confidence. I'm, when I work on projects that don't, where I don't have like code review, now I feel so much less confident uh, after having worked on projects where I know my colleagues take like, the work of code review seriously. And I know when my patch gets through it, it's better quality patch and I've learned things.
Right, so how do you make sure you don't expand the scope to like, somebody tried to fix a typo and now it's their responsibility to like fix everything that's wrong with the function. Uh, so I've got a, kind of a two-pronged approach to that. First is like kind of the medical idea, first do no harm, like if the function's messy, you're not allowed to make it messier. Uh, the other part of it is, this is something I'm trying to put into like impact in my own reviews and it's difficult is if the, f if the change is a strict improvement, it's not a regression in any way, it's probably worth landing as is and filing the ticket for, hey, like there's still a lot of room for improvement. Uh, the other part is just be clear as somebody sending a patch, what, what's the scope of my patch? If the scope is I'm fixing a typo, yeah, the fact that the thing next to it is like impossible to read is out of scope. If the patch, if the scope of the patch is, hey, I refactored this function so it's more reusable, now is probably a good time to like deal with the fact that the variable names are a mess. Uh, so I, I think it's part of the collaboration between the reviewer and the reviewee. Uh, and actually, one thing I forgot to mention is there's no rule that you have to have only one reviewer or that the reviewer has to be the module owner or whatever structure your project has. I, probably the best code reviews I've seen are somebody sends a path for something we feel is important, half a dozen people will give feedback. And the path, you just know at the end of it, the patch is so much stronger as a result of all the thought everybody is putting in. Yeah, so one of the things we've seen a lot is I feel like on one of the projects I work on, the first six months or so, most of my reviews were looking at sort of big patches that were sketching out how does this whole new subsystem works and figuring out, okay, uh, you know, the patch author, they've sort of worked up how they think it works. I agree with the overall design. Now how can we split these up into reviewable chunks? Okay, you added four utility functions here. Let's move those out into their own separate review. Okay, you added the interfaces that the public API will use. We can land the interfaces independently. Okay, you wrote the backend logic and like public API. We can land those separately. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with writing a 1200 line patch and asking people for feedback on it. It just shouldn't be the final artifact that you land, is my sort of view. Yeah. Uh, so the process OpenStack uses is there's an expectation that even if you're not a core reviewer, if that's sort of your goal, you will be contributing to reviews to the process. And I think they have some numeric guidelines like, uh, you know, you should do 10 reviews a month or something. And like if other people see, look over those and see that they're good quality reviews, they'll nominate you for core reviewership. Uh, in the other open source projects I worked on, even the like core committership is like, yeah, is SVN permissions or whatever, but like the process of noticing someone for that is super like loosey goosey. Like one of the projects I worked on probably went like 18 months without adding anyone new to the process just because they had a, it must be unanimous to add someone and the team had sort of hit that inflection point where it was big enough that nobody was unanimous or, you know, nobody, people weren't always around to give their, you know, approval. And so they went through this 18 months where no one knew got added just because the team had gotten big enough that not everyone could ever give their, you know, approval to any one person. And so we went back after having this pointed out to us uh, like pretty graphically in a keynote at our conference that we had this big problem. Uh, we went back and we changed the rules that, you know, we only required nobody to be strongly opposed. You know, if there were only a handful of people who were loosely opposed, that didn't need to block it. 
uh, rules like that. To, but I think in general, it's kind of hard because there's there's a very qualitative uh, there's a very qualitative thing to observing whether someone does good reviews. And you know, if somebody does a hundred reviews that uh, are mostly catching typos in comments, that's not invaluable. That's super valuable. That makes the comments easier to read. Like it's so good for everybody else. But maybe that might not make sense as a core reviewer on your project because that will also put them in a position where like, their ability to look at the architecture of patches is really important. And you haven't had the ability to evaluate that. That's, yeah, balancing those types of concerns is super difficult. And uh, that's part of why I appreciate this process because if you just want to contribute to a project by writing patches, it means you're the process for just writing patches is no more inconvenient than anyone else's process for writing patches. And that's, I think that's really important, that nobody on your team has a more inconvenient process for doing stuff. Um, so yeah. That, sure, yeah, you're also involved, so. Uh, sure, so uh, find a project, either one you're already involved with or if you're looking to get involved in a new project, find one that has a good code review structure. Uh, so I'm just going to, the Twisted project, if you're a Python person, is a, just such a fantastic culture of code review and they've been doing it since way before it was cool. So like, I think that for whatever your community is, find a project that has a great code review culture and get involved there. So Twisted has this idea that if you're new to the project, uh, you know, uh, you should review a patch by someone who's been around for a while, and then the person who's been around for a while has the responsibility to look over the review as well. And like, if, if you give a plus one, it's still the uh, long time person's responsibility to say, yes, uh, like I agree with this plus one, or I think I need another review. So I think that's really helpful to get started code reviewing. All right, well, thank you all very much.